Hey guys and welcome to part 5 of my 3D integration tutorial mini series where I will show you step by step how you can create awesome visual effects like flying 3D bullets, UFOs or dissolving people into crows. In the last part of this series I discussed step 3 of the process and took you on a wild roller coaster ride through 3D Studio Max to set up and render our 3D scene. If you love roller coasters or you're just really sad that you missed out, you can check it out right here. Today I'm going to discuss the last step of the process, step 4, and show you how to composite your rendered 3D elements back onto your original footage to finish off your 3D integration effect. In the last part we created our 3D scene, matched it up perfectly to our footage and rendered out all of the individual render passes that we need. We now need to combine these rendered layers with our original footage to make it appear as if all of the virtual elements we created are actually a part of the same scene. Now, this is a surprisingly straightforward process. The main trick lies in blending all of the layers together as realistically as possible. Let's dive straight into compositing everything together inside of Adobe After Effects. If you've been following this series, you should recognize this footage. This is the original UFO clip we tracked with the 3D camera tracker and then exported into 3D Studio Max. We no longer need the null objects, so we can just delete them. Now let's import the UFO footage we rendered in the last part of this tutorial series. In my export folder I have a whole bunch of exported EXR files. These EXR files are the beauty and the z-depth paths we rendered out using 3D Studio Max. I'm going to ignore the z-depth path for now, but we'll come back to it in a bit. Select the first image of your beauty render path. Ensure the open EXR sequence checkbox is ticked and hit open. Right click the imported image sequence and select interpret footage main. We need to ensure that the settings of the imported footage match the composition that we created our 3D elements for. Most importantly, let's set the frame rate to 23.976 to match the UFO base footage. This is probably the most important thing you have to do. If you do not set the frame rate correctly, your objects will start to badly misalign when you play back your composition. For the beauty pass, I am going to leave alpha on pre-multiplied. Hop over to the color management tab and check the preserve RGB checkbox. If you don't do this, your rendered layer will likely not look like what you exported from your 3D program because the color space will be adapted to After Effects. Close the window and drag the rendered UFO footage into your composition. If everything went well, you should now be able to scrub through your footage and there should be a UFO in the scene, properly matched up to the camera movement. Pretty cool, but let's blend it into the scene a little bit better. Firstly, it should be behind the branches, not on top of them. Duplicate the base footage layer and call the copy branches. Move the layer to the top of the composition so it obscures the UFO and remove the 3D camera tracker effect from it. To key out the sky, apply a linear color key effect to the branches layer. Select the color picker for the key color and select your sky. Voila, the UFO should be visible again, overlaid by the branches. I am going to increase the matching tolerance a little to around 19% to trim out a little bit more of the bright areas around the leaves and I might lower the matching softness just a tad. This looks quite good from a distance, but because our scene was shot on a very bright day, there is some color bleeding around the branches. Due to the bright sunlight, the linear color key cannot cleanly remove the bright outlines of the leaves. We can fix this however by applying a key light effect to the branches layer. Select the screen color picker, zoom into your footage and select the color of the bright blue outline we want to get rid of. Better, but it does look a little bit unnatural. I am going to lower the screen gain to around 70 and bring up the screen balance to 100 to bring back a bit more of the branches. Under the screen matte tab you can make further adjustments if required. I will bring up the clip black to around 20 and reduce the clip white to around 80. This is not too bad and if we zoom out we should now have a fairly clean branches layer covering up the UFO. Cool, that looks pretty good so far. Next, let's add some dark smoke to the area where the UFO is approaching. Think Independence Day. Let's have the UFO emerge from a dark cloud of smoke. For the smoke we will use this dark smoke stock footage elements from Action Essentials 2. Before we place it in our scene however, we have to clean it up a little bit, so let's drop it onto the new composition icon. A brand new composition with nothing but the dark smoke stock footage element will be created. The most obvious thing we need to fix is the smoke getting cut off at the bottom and the top of the layer. We can do this simply by adding a mask around the main body of the smoke and feathering it out a little bit. 
We want the smoke to disappear once the UFO emerges out of the cloud, but just fading out the opacity tends to look a little bit boring. Let's instead have the dark smoke vanish a little bit more organically by using a matte layer. Create a new solid and call it noise. Apply the turbulent noise effect to the layer and change the fractal type to cloudy. To animate the fractal noise, we want to keyframe the evolution property. We can use a simple expression to do this in a clever way, so Alt click on the stopwatch icon on the evolution property. In the expression editor, type time star 200. This expression will update the evolution value at each frame to the current time value multiplied by 200. And if we scrub through the composition, we should see the noise animate nicely. The turbulent noise is a little harsh, so search for the fast blur effect and apply it to the layer. Increase the blurriness to around 6% to make the noise a little bit softer. Because we want our smoke to be fully visible at first, but then slowly vanish, we now need to keyframe the contrast property on the turbulence noise effect. Click on the stopwatch icon and lower the contrast to zero. This should turn the layer solid black. Move forward a few seconds and increase the contrast until the layer is entirely white. If you scrub through the transition, the layer should start out fully black and then turn into organically moving cloudy noise and then brighten until it is entirely white. Finally, go back to the dark smoke layer and set the track map to Luma inverted. The smoke should now vanish in a much more interesting way than if we had just animated the opacity to fade out. Because we will embed this composition into our UFO scene, we want to keep the resolution as small as possible. Open up the composition settings and set the width and height so it barely encompasses the smoke element. 600 seems to work ok. I will also rename the composition to UFO Smoke. Make sure the smoke sits right in the middle of the layer and return to your UFO scene. Select your original footage, the one with the 3D camera tracker effect on it, and select the effect to reveal all of the track points again. Hover over your footage until you see a bullseye in the position where the UFO is. Right click and create a new solid. Drag this new solid below the branches layer. Ensure the new solid is selected and drag the UFO smoke composition onto the solid while holding down the ALT key. This will replace the contents of the newly created solid with our smoke composition. All of the layer properties like scale, rotation and position in 3D space will be maintained. Now rotate, scale and move the layer as required to position it nicely over our UFO. Once you're done, duplicate the layer and move, rotate, scale the copy to cover up another part of the area where the UFO will appear. I highly recommend that you also offset these smoke layers a little bit on the timeline so they don't play the exact same frame and all finish at slightly different times. I will create yet another copy of the dark smoke and place it over the top of the UFO. Let's have a look at what we've got. That looks pretty cool. I do think the smoke evaporates a little bit too soon though, so I am going to move all of the smoke layers forward a little bit on the timeline. Now that is much better. Now when I think of the Independence Day movie, I think fire and smoke. So let's add some fire into our approaching UFO smoke cloud. I will use this big fire stock footage element from Action Essentials 2. And again, I will clean it up a little first by dragging it onto the new composition icon to place it in its own composition. Add a mask around the main area of the fire and feather the mask out a little bit. Then open up the composition settings. I will call this one UFO Fire and reduce the width to just encompass the area of the fire. Return to the UFO composition. Duplicate the smoke layer, ensure it remains selected and drag the UFO Fire composition we just created onto it while holding down the ALT key. If you can't see your fire, ensure it is not placed behind all of the smoke layers in 3D space. Simply reposition it a little bit closer to the camera to make it visible. It looks best if the fire sits between the smoke layers, so I will duplicate one of my smoke layers and position it to cover up most of the fire layer. Let's scrub through our footage and see what the fire looks like. Funky, but the fire does remain visible for way too long. That's easy enough to fix though. Simply animate the opacity of the UFO fire layer to fade it out before all of the smoke elements evaporate. Much better. Let's get to some Z-depth compositing to blend the smoke and fire layers a bit better with our UFO. We want to pre-compose all of the smoke and fire layers we created, but remember they are 3D layers and their positioning depends on the camera. So duplicate the camera, 
Select the camera copy and all the smoke and fire layers and go to layer pre-compose. I will call this new composition Smoke of Doom and hit OK. Our UFO composition should still look exactly like it did before. Now import the Z-depth pass you exported from your 3D program. Right click it and go to Interpret Footage Main, like we did with the Beauty Render pass. Set the frame rate to 23.976 to match our UFO composition and set the alpha to ignore. For the Z-depth layer we don't really care about the alpha channel. Also don't forget to tick the Preserve RGB option under the Color Management tab. Drag the Z-depth pass into your composition just above the Smoke of Doom layer. Ensure that the animation of this layer matches perfectly with the rendered UFO layer. We will now use this Z-depth pass to have the UFO appear to emerge and poke out of the Smoke of Doom as it approaches. For this we will animate the brightness of the Z-depth layer. Search for the exposure effect and apply it to the layer. Go to a time position where you want the UFO to be fully emerged from the cloud of smoke. Bring up the exposure and lower the gamma correction so the UFO side facing the camera is strong white and the side facing away from the camera is dark grey, almost black. Now enable keyframes for the exposure and gamma correction properties and move back a little bit to a moment where you want the UFO to still be fully hidden behind the smoke of doom. Lower the exposure until the UFO appears fully black. Now scrub through your footage. The UFO should suddenly appear out of the black. Now on the Smoke of Doom layer set the track map to Luma Inverted. Playing through our animation the UFO should now appear to push out of the smoke and fire with the side facing the camera first. Notice that the smoke lingers around the parts of the UFO that are furthest away from the camera before it evaporates. Using the Z-depth pass we can give the impression that the physical shape of the UFO is interacting with our flat stock footage layers and binds them together more realistically. Let's play back our UFO animation. That looks pretty good I'd say. One thing that really helps bind a number of composited layers together is applying effects to all of the layers together. We will apply some color correction and color grading to this composition to achieve just that. Create a new adjustment layer and call it correction and grading. Now search for and apply the levels effect to it. I will bring up the input black a little bit to make the black areas darker and I will reduce the output white just a little bit so it looks a bit more like a dull day rather than a bright sunny one. Now apply a color balance effect to the adjustment layer. I want the footage to get a strong bluish tint so I will increase the shadow blue balance to around 50. I will also bring down the highlight red balance and the highlight green balance by a lot to mainly leave the blue in those areas. Finally apply an exposure effect and bring the exposure down to around minus 0.5 to darken the entire clip. This not only looks more dramatic but notice how strongly the UFO, smoke, fire and base footage layers have been glued together and look like they're all part of the same shot. Actually one thing that I think will make this effect look even cooler is increasing the intensity of the fire and slowing it down a little bit. It does look a little bit too much like an ordinary fire and the color grading has dulled it out quite a bit. Open up the Smoke of Doom composition and select the UFO fire layer. Right click it and go to time, time stretch. I will slow the fire down to 50% so set the time stretch value to 200. That looks a lot nicer. Actually while we're here I will fix up the hole in our Smoke of Doom layer simply by duplicating a smoke layer and moving it into position. Let's also restrict the fire to the smoky areas by applying a simple mask to the UFO fire layer and feathering it out. Now apply a glow effect to the fire layer and adjust the threshold, radius and intensity until the fire looks nice and aggressive. Reposition any smoke layers as required to make the fire sit nicely in your smoke cloud. Finally because we stretched the timing on the fire layer let's reanimate the opacity so the fire fades out before all of the smoke evaporates. Return to the UFO composition and play it back. Now that looks like a cool UFO effect. Before we finish off let me just quickly jump over to my Turn to Crows 3D integration to show you an effect where the 3D elements have to cast shadows. This is the final effect without color grading. Notice that I have a standard beauty pass of our crows just like we did with the UFO. However I also exported a shadows only pass. This pass contains nothing but the shadows of the crows as they move over the pier and over other crows. I did nothing special to this layer I just composited it like we did all of the layers for the UFO effect. 
The only other thing I've added is a soft dark shadow over the main area of the pier. This is just to make it appear like the density of the murder of crows is a lot greater than it really is. Well, and that is it. We've finished our 3D integration effect. Even Walter's excited we finally finished our effect. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and as always please leave any comments, questions or suggestions in the section below. Even though we finished our final effect and you should now be able to follow roughly the same process to create pretty much any 3D integration effect you want, I will do one more tutorial to cover one of my favorite plugins for Adobe After Effects, Element 3D from Video Copilot, so stay tuned for some more cool 3D effects. If you want to show some support, please subscribe, like or share, it really helps out a lot with the channel and if you're feeling particularly stalkery, you can also find and follow me on Facebook or Twitter. Until next time, I will see you later. Yeah.